Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today once again we have brought out a very important topic particularly concerned to mechanical operations in the industry that is solid-solid separation. We have studied previously about gas-solid separation and we are going to discuss about solid-liquid separation, liquid-liquid separation, gas-gas separation. But today our topic is solid-solid separation which is a very important part of mechanical operations. Remember it is mechanical operations and not mass transfer, uh, both gas solid and solid solid separations because there is no transfer of mass from one medium to another but simply the separation of two solid medias depending on the difference of their shapes, sizes, colors, densities, magnetic properties, volatilities, hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity. We are going to take out individually each of the property of the solids and how these properties can be utilized in different methods that are re uh, regularly and popularly followed in the industry for solid solid separation. Uh, the first uh, distinguishing factor which is very relevant and is very uh, common to our eyes in particular if we see uh, the first thing we observe about uh, solids is their size. So depending on the difference in sizes of two solids they can be easily separated by a method called seeding or screening wherein uh, we must have seen that in the villages or even at our homes we use sieves that is nets so seeds are something like this, wherein we use net-like structure, net-like structure with different pore sizes, with different pore sizes of each individual nets, and through this, a particular size of the solids pass on to move to the next screen. And similarly, there are multiple screens in series and a shaking structure which shakes the screens one after the other and a particular size is retained on that particular screen depending on the pore size of the nets or the sieves that are there and uh, some of the particles pass through it and move on to the next sieve and partic uh, further to the next and uh, next sieve and finally to the pan the finest uh, fines reach to the pan which is a blind so there are no nets further and like this we can find the particle size distribution so how many particles are there greater than 50 microns how many particles are there greater than 45 microns how much particles uh, how much percentage of the particles are there beyond 40 micron we have different micron sizes uh, of this particular nets or sieves that are used in the industry they are typically uh, manufactured like 46 microns or 50 microns they are standards in the industry and when we pass the solid through this particular sieves uh, a particular size of the particles that are lesser than the micron size of the uh, pores the pore sizes of the nets uh, pass through the nets and the other gets retained so if you have two different sizes supposedly bigger particles and smaller fines we need to separate out the fines from the bigger particles we pass it through a sieve uh, such that the sieve pore size pore size of the sieve pore size is greater than uh, this particular stone this particular stone size but is uh, lesser than this particular fines so the fines definitely pass through the pore whereas if you see uh, that the, the uh, solids uh, that are the stones do not pass through the particular sieves or the screens and this is the method of screening or sieving basically a simple method that is used regularly at our homes or at our household or in the villages in particular where people shake manually in, in the industries it is done through a shaker but uh, you would see in the villages uh, the practice is common that uh, our grandmothers or uh, the, the people in the villages they do, they do generally shake the screens such that the fines uh, go out of the uh, wheat and the wheat uh, with the bigger size is collected at the top of the sieve. This is the method of sieving or screen depending on the size. So first castigation is gone depending on the size we can uh, separate out the solids uh, by sieving or screening simply. Second is the color. This was a method that was popularly used that is popularly used in the industry particularly in, in uh, household if we say hand picking is a technique that is usually used when it comes to different colors. Supposedly there is a yellow colored uh, uh, solid and there is a green color solid we uh, easily we identify it through our vision only and unless if you are uh, uh, color blind you won't be able to see it but uh, normally when you see a different colored solid you tend to hand pick it and separate it out but in the industry the hand picking is a tedious job and it is a continuous process of production so what they do in PepsiCo India what they used to do was uh, they used to manually scan each of the chips so it was a chips manufacturing unit it was a potato chips the lays that you have uh, in the industry uh, in the market the five rupees ten rupees lace packets those potato chips were manufactured and what, whichever uh, chips got over fried or got burned was identified by its brown color so there was chips coming in 
chips coming in chips coming in supposedly this is over fried this is having a brown color and a coarse texture texture so there was a scanner here which would be scanning all the chips individually and whichever there was a feeding mechanism there uh, whichever wouldn't match that description of a good chips in terms of its shape or color color or shape also uh, would be automatically blown out using a pneumatic system so pneumatic system would blow this uh, chips out of the system and would dump it into waste so over pound or over fried chips that would have a different texture or different color from the normal chips would be separated by a pneumatic movement of air which would be instigated by the scanning mechanism so this type of mechanism is very common in the industry because color is something that that the solid particles can be easily identified or uh, and, and can be easily concluded to be different from each other with the virtue of color or shape they are having the texture that they are having and if it doesn't matches a pneumatic blow of air simply separates out the particular solid from the other solids and they let the other solids pass so this is a scanning mechanism and the feedback system so it is reading it is matching there is a set point given if it doesn't match the set point it is giving a command of blowing out and uh, whenever it is brown or over fried it is uh, like moved out or uh, thrown out of the uh, reel of production so this is where the virtue of color or shape particularly the color now the third one very important density whenever there is the, the particles are of same size but of different density supposedly uh, there is a very light solid like thermocol and there is a very heavy solid like uh, a stone or something like that we choose a liquid we choose a liquid medium such that the density of the liquid medium let it be rho l is greater than the density of solid 1 but is lesser than the density of solid 2 so what happens is since the liquid density of uh, the medium that we are using supposedly we keep this in a container and we pour around the solid very softly and gently without applying any type of external force on it we spray the solid on the surface of this liquid so what happens is uh, since this solid solid 2 is having a higher density than the liquid it would deposit the stones would deposit whereas the thermocol would prefer to stay at the top of the liquid so again this liquid layer will have thermocol on the top of it and stones sunk to the bottom so this is the density separation method popularly followed in the industry density separation so we first saw sieving and screening for size then we saw how scanning is done in the case of color or shape and now we are seeing how a liquid medium is selected such that one of the solids uh, deposits and the other solid basically floats at the surface such that the two solids are separated from each other solid 2 and solid 1 we choose the liquid medium as such this is how the density separation is done now coming to the fourth castigation when it comes to solid solid separation magnetic properties very important once again here the ferromagnetic materials that is hematite or these kind of ores that are having magnetic properties are basically used uh, separated out supposedly these are my particles same size almost same density but particularly these particles the black ones are having magnetic properties so we keep a magnetic separator here so it, that creates a magnetic field across the section such that the magnetic particles when it passes through it are attracted towards it or are repelled that is thrown out of the rail of the system and as the rail proceeds only the non-magnetic particles survive so this is called magnetic separation magnetic separation and the device used is a magnetic separator which creates a magnetic field such that the magnetic particles are either attracted or are repelled from the system and the train moves ahead with non-magnetic materials only so depending on the magnetic properties these type of solids can be separated the magnetic solids like hematite or something like that that has iron basically inculcated in it can be separated out, out from the non-ferromagnetic or non-ferrous particles in particular this is used to separate out ferrous ores in the industry to uh, bring out the ferrous ores in the system because mostly most of the ores are associated with ferrous ores most of the ores are associated with ferrous ores and ferrous uh, ferric has magnetic properties and that's why magnetic separator is regularly used in the ore industry in the metal industry 
to separate out the ferrous or ferric substances from the uh, mainstream of other ores. So now, once we are done with the density, size, color and magnetic property, we come to volatility. A famous industrial practice to separate out two solids is using the property of sublimation. What is sublimation? We basically use a flask and we heat the flask. What happens is, whenever we give the heat source, the solid particles, supposedly there are some solid particles, some are black, some are white. Let us consider the black ones sublime easily. What is sublimation? Sublimation is direct transformation to solid to vapor. Like camphor, like iodine. These type of solids, what happens is they easily vaporize. Naphthalene bonds, they easily vaporize in the presence of heat. There is no intermediate stage of liquid. There is no intermediate stage of liquid. So what happens is the solids tend to form vapors. And when they tend to form directly vapors, these particles, the black ones, they vaporize. Whereas the white ones that are having less volatility, less volatility as compared, that is less sublimation uh, tendency. Supposedly a stone and naphthalene ball, we want to separate the two. Let us consider both have the same density, almost the same color, and the sizes of the particles are almost the same. So we can use this property of sublimation wherein we expose this solid mixture, solid mixture to heat and camphor or the naphthalene is directly evaporated or like sublimated at the top. And there is a flux like chamber where we collect, we again condense this particular vapors and we transform it back into solids. So at the top of the flask, the solids are recollected back, separated from the stones or the non-sublime solid. The remaining is non-vaporizable solids, non-vaporized or unvaporized solids that doesn't sublime and at the top is collected the vapors in the condensed form once again transformed back to solid the ones which had vaporized or which had a higher volatility and hence the solids transform directly into vapor as a result of sublimation. This is the principle of sublimation. So whenever there is a volatility difference or there is a tendency of sublimation of the particular solid, particularly in case of iodine, naphthalene, these type of substances which easily vaporize camphor, we can use this particular sublimation technique. So this is for volatility. Now the most difficult and tedious but yet most interesting and common industrial practice is the separation of solids by its virtual hydrophobicity or hydrophilicity. When all of these methods fail, that is two solids or a solid mixture having the same size, almost the same color, undistinguishable from each other, density almost the same when put in water or any other liquid medium, um, both of them sink or both of them float, magnetic properties are almost the same, uh, volatility almost the same, none of them sublime. The final nail in the coffin is hydrophilicity or hydrophilicity. What does this mean? Hydrophobic is a substance which has a tendency to be afraid of water. Phobicity, phobic, uh, you can understand there is a tendency to move out. They're afraid of the liquid medium or water and they tend to move out of the system. So hydrophobic elements tend to move out of the system. Hydrophilic systems uh, like uh, solids tend to remain in close contact with the water molecules. So they surround the water molecules. So you see that this property of hydrophilicity or hydrophobicity is basically used in flux rotation. Very popular industry practice. Very popular industry practice. Flood flotation. What they do is they keep a water structure, they agitate the water structure and they put the solid mixture in. This is the technique of flux flotation. They put the solids in and after that once the solids are dissoluted in the water, remember this should be insoluble in water as well. Insoluble. That is it shouldn't dissolve in water. If it dissolves in water, you will have to find some other means of performing the flux rotation, some other liquid medium. And from bottom, we pump in air, bubbles through the water. So air bubbles are formed in the water, 
and what happens is the hydrophobic elements the hydrophobic that is the water fearing elements tend to stick to the surface of the air this is the air bubble the hydrophobic elements tend to stick to the surface of the air hydrophobic because they want to leave the water the water hating elements they want to leave the water by any means that's why they stick to the air bubble surface and when the air bubble moves to the surface the hydrophobic elements stick to the air bubble and come to the surface and form a frog frog jisko hum log hindi mein jhag bolte hain the frog collected at the top is skimmed off or taken out and the rest of the liquid is filtered out or like brought out of the system so the frog basically is the air bubbles associated with the hydrophobic elements now the hydrophilic elements tend to stay with water itself this is water and they do not go with the water air so hydrophobic leaves with the air hydrophilic stays in the system and this is how the two uh, solids are separated by constant supply of air bubbles bubbling it through the water now two types of elements are deliberately added to promote the froth flotation method now what is the what are the two things that are added one is the promoter that inculcates the frothers that inculcate hydrophobicity or hydrophilicity in the particular substance supposedly two materials they are slightly having different degrees of hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity one is slightly hydrophilic one is slightly hydrophobic in that case the separation efficiency will be low in that case what we do is we inculcate or we induce a particular third substance a third substance in the system a foreign material in the system such that it increases the hydrophobicity of the hydrophobic element and it increases the hydrophilicity of the hydrophilic element either of them either it increases the hydrophobicity which automatically makes one substance substance a or one solid solid a more hydrophobic than solid b and hence it moves out with the air or it makes b more hydrophilic so it remain tends to remain more with the liquid and a becomes relatively more hydrophobic so the relative hydrophobicity or relative hydrophilicity is induced by adding a third substance a foreign substance this is the work of a promoter which changes the hydrophobic or hydrophilic properties the other is the frother which maintains the stability of the air bubbles as it is as it is being attacked by the hydrophobic element there is a tendency of the bubble to collapse or to break the frother basically enhances the froth formation makes the air bubbles stable and do not let them does not let them break so easily so that they can travel through the space and come to the surface along with the hydrophobic elements and form the froth and the froth can then be skimmed off so this is the virtue of hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity i hope you have understood how solids and solids are separated from each other in terms of size color shape density magnetic properties volatility and finally hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity that will be it for today in case of solid solid separation if you have any doubts please comment in the comment section share this page to your friends if you like the video subscribe to our channel press the bell icon for regular updates that's all for today thank you very much